Shalom, greetings, precious saints, in the name of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is your brother and your host in the faith, Joe Kennedy, my name, voice of thunders, the divinity expression I am. Now, precious saints, today, by the Spirit and by the grace of God, I come to you as humble as I know how, with love and with much humility. I'm so happy that I'm able to come to you live and be able to teach us uh, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. For I am casted by the Spirit of God in the mysteries of the kingdom. And therefore it is an honor and it's a privilege to be a steward of the mysteries of God in my time and my generation. Therefore blessed be the name of the Lord of Israel, Yahweh, yod hei vav -Hey. Yod hei shin vav -Hey. Yod hei wak vav -Hey. The blessed King of kings and Lord of lords. Now today, precious saints, before I go any further, I want to appreciate all those who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, all of those who have been a blessing to my YouTube channel. And if you are keeping on watching my YouTube channel, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. Uh, this day, I want to tackle a message that is very key. And uh, the message that I want to handle in a few minutes has everything to do uh, with the reconfiguration of mindset. I want to deal with the prophetic reconfiguration of mindset. The prophetic reconfiguration of mindset. Mindsets have to be reconfigured. As far as our journey in God is concerned, mindsets must be reconfigured, precious saints. Mindsets must be reconfigured. Now in the book of Joshua chapter 5 and verse number 9, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. I want you to understand that Gilgal represents a place at which the thought processes of a nation, the thought processes of an individual are shaped by the voice and the will of God. That is what Gilgal represents. One of the first things God does in preparing the nation of Israel for conquest is to prophetically reconfigure their perspective of their own identity and destiny. And as far as the destiny of this nation is concerned, we as the nation of Kenya we have come to a place where God is prophetically reconfiguring the perspective of our identity as a nation and our destiny as a nation. And that is why I tell people that the man to watch at this coming election is the man Raila Odinga. It is a reformation. It is a reformation of the structure of thinking of Israel. That is what it entails. At Gilgal, God unveils the desire and the plan he has for the Israelites. Now, I want you to understand that Gilgal is a defining moment in the history of Israel. And at this juncture where we are as a nation of Kenya, we are in the spiritual place over the nation called Gilgal. We are at Gilgal as a nation spiritually. It is at Gilgal that the Israelites were informed that a circle in their journey was completed. Their negative historical past 
was adjusted and brought into alignment with their present and future destiny. There is a lot of negative and historical past concerning the nation of Kenya where I am. The Lord has made me know that there is adjustment that is spiritually going on over Kenya and that is bringing into alignment Kenya with their present and their future destiny even as we forge ahead in the coming days. The process of emancipation that commenced under the leadership of Moses was concluded under the leadership of a man called Joshua. The program of reproach that characterized the behavior of the people of Israel in their journey from Egypt to the promised land was radically terminated. And this is what is happening in Kenya. The program of reproach that characterized the behavior of Kenyans since independence to our promised land, which is economical revolution, is currently radically being terminated by the hand of the sovereign Lord over the nation of Kenya. And I want you to understand, precious sin, that a study of Israel's journey through the wilderness reveals the indelible impression that the sojourn in Egypt made on the Hebrew people. It is the journey that makes a person. It is a journey that makes a people. This may be understood in the light of the hardships and sufferings they had undergone for 400 years. And as a nation, we have gone through hardship and suffering since independence in the year 1963. The oppressive Egyptian system had made them slaves and marred their lives and identities. And I want you to listen to me very carefully, precious sin. The reproach of Egypt was etched into the psychic of the Hebrews. And this is the whole idea. The reproach of Kenya is etched into the psychic of Kenyans. Kenyans have a tendency not to forget things. After so many years of slavery at Gilgal, a new perspective of their future was divinely inscribed into their minds. And right now, there is a new uh, a future being inscribed in the minds of the people. Their present interpretation of life was no longer shaped by the bondage of their past experiences, but by their renovated understanding of God and their destiny. By understanding their future, their prophetic lenses were aligned and adjusted so that they could transcend their past experiences and their temporary present reality and became a favorite with the will of God for their lives. The divine message radically changes, or rather changed, the elevation of the people from that of oppression to progression as God's chosen nation. You see, precious saying, the prophetic word goes before a people and guides them into understanding the fullness of God's purpose for their lives. An example of this is the life and the ministry of Timothy, the son of Apostle Paul. The prophecies released to Timothy were the compass that shaped and directed his ministry as he steered his way through life. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, This charge I commit to you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Now listen to me. The apostolic and the prophetic release upon Timothy was to ensure that he functioned in his appointed place within the body of Christ and that he clearly understood his duties. These instructions were received by prophetic impartation. Prophetic impartation and apostolic commanding previously made, which is the Greek word, pro-ago, 
it means concerning you, makes reference to Timothy being led by the prophetic word released upon him at a specific time and place. It is evident that the apostolic charge of the prophetic impartation directs and goes before those who are serving the purpose of God. These instructions help them to fight correctly and also guide them into fulfilling their function according to the divine intent. In fact, it was through the prophetic channel that he received the gift. And if you, if you understand, in 1 Timothy 4 verse 14, the Bible says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So it is very important that at this juncture we need a prophetic reconfiguration of the mindset. Kenyans, they need a prophetic configuration of the mind. The church of God in Kenya, the church of God around the globe, requires a prophetic reconfiguration of the mind because the Bible is very clear. The word of God says in Isaiah that my thoughts are not your thoughts. That is Isaiah 55 verse 10. Neither are my ways your ways. But now as we come to the New Testament, Paul says in the New Testament, in the book of Philippians, he says that let this mind that was in Christ Jesus, let that mind be in you. All right? He says, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus, let that mind be in you. That is Philippians 2 verse 5. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. So the mind that was in Christ Jesus was the mind that gives the individual, that gives a people the form of God. The mind that was in Christ Jesus was the mind that forms God in a person, that forms God in a people. We need to have this kind of mind that gives you the form of God in your life. People don't have, many believers lack the form of God in them because they have not yet reconfigured their minds prophetically to receive the form of God. The form of God cannot be manifested in you if you don't reconfigure your mind. In other words, you have to re engineer a new mindset in the patterns of your thinking and thought processes and in the patterns of your human imagination to begin to imagine things from the alignment with that which is forming up in your spirit glory to the name of jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He thought it not. This mind that was in Christ Jesus did not thought it robbery to be equal with God. Meaning, as far as prophetic reconfiguration of the mind is concerned, precious saints, it is important to understand that equality with God is prophetic alignment with God. I'm going to say that again. It is important to understand that the reconfiguration of the mind, the re-engineering of the mind, where the mind of Christ is replacing the mind of man, that kind of reconfiguration, that kind of re-engineering of the mind, where the mind of Christ takes over your mind in you, that is what we call equality with God. And equality with God is bearing the form of God, which Paul says it is not an act of robbery. So it is not a spiritual robbery to be 
equal with God at mind level. To be equal with God at mind level is not robbery. And this has everything to do with our prophetic migration, even as we journey in God. It is important that we journey in God with equality with God, bearing that equality with God at the mind level. Glory to the name of Jesus. So a characteristic feature in prophetic ministry involves that of lending spiritual interpretation. A characteristic feature in prophetic ministry involves that of lending spiritual interpretation. So we have to lend spiritual interpretation, especially in directing the people, in directing the ecclesia, which is the body members of sons of God who form the church in her journey. Now listen to me, precious saint. The prophetic office is the office that interprets and thereby proclaims the mind of God to the people. The prophetic office is the office that interprets and thereby proclaims the mind of God to the people. This does not imply that the believer does not have the right to spiritual interpretation. No, the believer has the right to spiritual interpretation when it comes to the things of God. You have a right as a believer, but there is a place of the prophet in the life of every believer. Although it is the privilege of every believer to know the mind and the counsel of God, there is little questioning that the office of the prophet encourages and sharpens the ability of the believer to know the mind of God personally and for the church at the time in history. Often the predictive, which is an integral aspect in prophetic ministry, features so prominently that there is a lack of emphasis on other aspects of prophetic ministry. Now listen to me. The function of spiritual interpretation plays a fundamental role in the office of the prophetic ministry. It is the interpretation of everything. Listen to me. It is the interpretation of everything from a spiritual standpoint, the bringing of the spiritual implication of things, past, present, and future, before the people of God, and giving them to understand the significance of things in their spiritual value and meaning. It is very important that you understand that. And therefore, precious saint, a key of changing seasons is the ability of churches, is the ability of churches, the key feature of changing seasons and times is the ability of church leaders to interpret the will of God for that season. A key feature of changing seasons is the ability of church leaders who are spiritually conscious, bearing the form of God at equality with God in the mind, ability to interpret the will of God for that season over a particular people or a nation. And at this time and season in Kenya, some and most of the church leaders in Kenya, whom we call the clergy, have failed. They have failed to interpret, accurately and forensically interpret the will of God in the season we are in Kenya, which is electioneering season. They have failed to interpret 
accurately the will of God yeah. and they are telling people that God has chosen Ruto when the will of God says he has chosen Raila Odinga. And the function and the nature of authentic prophetic ministry is evident in the life of this man we began at the hour we began, the man Joshua. He was personally connected to the throne of God and directly received his mandate for the new season through the journey of the people. Joshua's communion with God Precious saying, Joshua's communion with God ensured that he received guidance, direction, and clarity of the mind and counsel of God. And here is where the church leaders, the clergymen in Kenya, have failed. They have failed to walk in communion with God to ensure that they receive accurate, authentic guidance direction and clarity of the mind and the counsel of God over Kenya. He, Joshua, had to interpret the will of God for the people. And most prophets in the nation of Kenya, most clergymen, most pastors, have failed to accurately and forensically, without any form of ambiguity, they have failed to interpret the will of God over Kenya, as far as the forthcoming election 2022 is concerned, from this we can deduce that the interpretation of the message is fundamental to the application of that message. It is very important that we understand that the interpretation of the message that is signaled from the throne of God is fundamental to the application of that message over a people or over a nation. And as I come into a nearby clause, at Gilgal, the will of God had to be integrated. Listen to me. At Gilgal, where Joshua was brought, the will of God had to be integrated into the mentality of the people. And it is now in the seasons of the nation of Kenya, which is an electioneering season, we have come at a place spiritually called Gilgal as a nation. And it is in the spiritual reality of Kenya, where we are right now spiritually, at Gilgal in the spirit realm, that the will of God has to be integrated into the mentality of the people. The will of God, which says it is Cyrus, Raila Odinga, the man, to be the president, it is at this hour that that will of God that says Raila is the man to watch, that is the point at which the will of God must be integrated to the mentality of the Kenyan people. Glory to Jesus. Gilgal is that place where the leadership of the church, the clergy, the leadership of the church receives fresh directives from God. Leaders must not only hear a clear message from God. Church leaders must not only hear a clear message from God, but also understand it is so that the people can be properly guided. Glory to God. Listen to me. Leadership must not only hear a clarion, clarity, message from God over a nation, but also the leaders of the church, clergy, must understand it is so that the people can be properly, accurately guided. Joshua had to receive the first-hand instructions that were peculiar to his divine assignment. He could no longer walk in the shadow of the glory that he encountered when he served under the leadership of Moses. And we are going to go on from there. I'll be dealing next episode with the prophetic providing an ear to hear God 
accurately. This is where the prophets in the nation of Kenya have failed. They have not provided accurate hearing of God. This is your brother and your host, Joe Kennedy, signing out. Shabbat Shalom. Till we meet again, remain in your identity of Christ. Allow me sign out to the glory of God, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. I'm rushing to a, a church meeting in Kilifim Twapa. We have a meeting there for two days that is going on today, actually beginning, commencing today, ending tomorrow. And I'll be there ministering together with Apostle Samuel Ome, my good friend from Nigeria. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. Remain always in your identity of Christ. Shabbat Shalom, Yahweh Elohim. Amen.